Welcome everyone to Dynamic Thriving Podcast. I am so excited that you are here. I am your host, Mary Ann Pack, and I am your spiritual guide in all things life transformational. And today we have a really special guest, my dear friend and colleague, Christy Sullivan. Thank you, Christy, for coming and joining us. Thank you so much for this invite and um, for hosting this great platform. I think it's so great that you're doing this. I know you did something last year and you've just mm-hmm. up-leveled it, I think, to this year. Yes, yes. Coffee and Convo Live. That was so much fun to have you on there. And now to get to have you back on the podcast, I'm very excited about that. And um, I just want to jump right in and set our intention. Um, our topic is about self-care and how to create a personalized plan for our own self-care. So carry with you through this podcast the intention that you'll get some nuggets of gold from Christy as to how important self-care is to all of us. So Christy, I wanna thank you again for coming and I wanna invite you to tell us who is Christy Sullivan and what good do you bring into the world? Wow, that's a big question. Um, and it's definitely evolving, but I right now say I'm a human design expert and queen of self-care because that's my platform. I motivate and guide busy women, entrepreneurs, and even caregivers to make sure that they are doing self-care on a daily basis mm-hmm. and to create rituals that Um, help them to align their energy. And this means they're living their human design. So I do this through, I set a platform. I uh, have a membership group. I also have a free Facebook group called Christy's Self-Care Tribe. And I just love to post a lot of inspiring things and resources and tools for my tribe to be inspired to do self-care on a daily basis because it is so essential. I love that. I know I am not very good at daily (laughs) self-care. It's kind of spotty. So this is going to be really good for me too, because I really need to put my self-care at the top of my list because there's just so many times. I know when I actually do it, I feel so much better and there's so much more clarity and ease and flow in my day. And oh, I know it's important and I've just got to be that devoted to myself. So our, um, you also call yourself a self-care influencer and a human design expert. What are those things? Explain that to us. So um I say influencer because I hope that what I'm doing is influencing others. Um, I like to teach workshops though as well and have done a lot of speaking in the last six months um, to try to just share and teach um, the audience about self-care, but also how it ties to something called human design. Mm. And human design is a system of understanding how you operate energetically. And when you are practicing self-care, it helps to align that energy and how you operate more effortlessly and efficiently. I like that. I love effortlessly and efficiently. (laughs) Those are two of my favorite words. (laughs) Uh, And ease. Let's also add that another E word. Oh, yes. The, the ever important ease. So our topic today is aligning your self-care to your design, aligning the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual. So expound on why self-care is so important to us. You know, what are the benefits of taking time out for self-care? Well, I think we know, especially in the most recent days and year that we've had that self-care is so important. Uh, For me, I know in my journey, a few years back, not just this year, I faced some challenges in my life that um, really shifted things. And 
doing consistent self care. And luckily I had a practice of yoga and some meditation before uh, this period of time, but I also was able to expand on that and it helped me through these challenging times. It helped me to evolve and um, connect within to myself so that even I could understand um, what I needed to do, what answers uh, came from my inner wisdom. Mm. So self-care is, is more than just exercise and diet. Um, in my opinion, it goes well beyond that. And, and I consider there are three different levels of self-care. The first occasional self-care where we all start, um, we may start eating better, or exercising occasionally to know that we have to get in shape. Typically, these are people who do New Year's resolutions, but after a few weeks, they may fall by the wayside, those resolutions <laughs> or intentions. Yeah, We're, we've all been there. We have all been there. You're stepping on my toes now, girl. <laughs> and that's okay because that's our, our awareness is okay. We, we mean to do more self-care, but we're just not able to do it consistently. So the second level is when you do start to put in every day, a daily practice of some sort of self-care. It could be, and it looks different for everyone. It could be eating better foods. It could be moving your body 30 minutes a day, or for some period of time, it could even be that you're just more aware and um, choosing to sleep better, better hours. Mm -hmm. um, and so you feel more rested and then you're doing it on a more consistent basis. So I consider this level where you get more committed. And um, I think, you know, we all strive for this. We all want to achieve um, more of this consistent committed practice. And it can look again different for everybody and be bite size. It doesn't have to be these long um, uh, periods of time. It could be just taking a few breaths a few times a day where you just stop right. and take those few breaths. It's more than just New Year's resolutions for sure. Right. And then I would say the third level I'll just mention uh, briefly is what I call spiritual self-care. And this is really what came into play for me in the last few years. And this is, I think, a lot of people in this current time while we're, why we are seeing self-care so important because we're being asked to pause. We're being asked to slow down. Yes. Um, who's asking us? I think our inner bodies, our inner wisdom. Um, and when we slow down, and maybe put some more attention to the inside than the outside. The spiritual care, self-care can look like going inward, like journaling maybe what's going on for you or practicing a daily gratitude, um, uh, having daily gratitude journal or a, a prayer time could be meditating. It also could mean working with somebody, coaches or therapists, to uncover some self-living beliefs or how to heal um, trauma from and wounds from the past or even from our ancestral energy. There's so many things and it's really about just deciding what do you need to evolve, to heal. And that spiritual self-care is beyond just that committed daily self-care practice. It's really taking time to go inward. I say the work is on the inside, not the outside as much. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And do you also think, I? one of my coaches, she teaches a lot about pausing and um, she sparked something in my thoughts one time when she said that this is more about pausing. These ritual self-care times are more about devotion than discipline. And after she said that, I had to go look those two words up because, um, and I was shocked because discipline was so heavy and constrictive. It was, you know, forcing yourself to do something on the fear of punishment because of the fear of punishment for not doing it right, air quotes, but devotion 
when I looked that word up, it was just like, I've been using the wrong word all the time because I always talk about being disciplined in our thoughts and our emotions. And, and then when I looked up devotion, it was love. It was um, enthusiasm. It was loyalty. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is how I want to be towards myself. I want to be devoted, not disciplined. Because discipline carries that boom of a hammer that you're going to be punished if you don't do it. So that's, that's huge. And to me, that's also that spiritual side of it is that we're truly devoted to ourselves because we're loving beings and we must start with ourselves. So I love that you bring out that it's, it is actually spirit, mind, body. You know, we have to we have to approach it from a spiritual side because we love ourselves because we can't love somebody else if we don't first love ourselves. So you're definitely speaking to me here. Explain a little bit about human design. Um, I've had mine read, but I mean, mine processed or taken a, a little um, assessment, but I don't really know that much about it because I haven't done that yet. So um, explain a little bit more about what human design is and why it's important for somebody to actually have you talk to them about their own human design. Sure. So human design, I explain it is an energetic blueprint or wiring of who you are. And this is really what you were born as. Um, in human design, we look at your birth date sort of like astrology. Mm -hmm. And we look at that birth date as well as the three months prior when you were encoded and you have an operating system, an energy system. This makes you unique. So when you look at astrology and you see the 12 zodiac signs, it's almost like I describe it your car model that you were assigned or categorized in. <laughs> but when you look under the hood of the car, you see a lot of intricate wiring and connections. Mm -hmm. And some people are running a V8 versus a V6 or V4. And so there's a lot of different um, unique, again, wiring that is specific to the person. And um, it makes us who we are because we know we don't look the same on the outside. So this is a, a system that helps you understand why we don't look the same on the inside either. And so human design is a very complex system, in my opinion, because you can find a lot of information online and you run what's called a chart based on your birth date and year and location. Um, but the chart is often sort of like hieroglyphics. And so I always recommend... Um, and I can help to sit down with somebody who can explain the chart and start to help you understand what this shows about your unique energetic blueprint. And that's just the start. Um, so you can um, sit down with somebody and then start to do maybe some self-study around the different aspects of different energy. And the other thing I want to mention is human design teaches you while we were born a certain way, we also are conditioned in society through parents and authority figures, even advertising to do and act a certain way. And once we start to recognize that some of that conditioning is not really meant to support who we truly are, or we uncover or validate that, yeah, I don't really believe that and I feel better doing things a different way or I find more success and abundance when I do things in, in a way that works for me. And again, that's why it's unique and why human design can really help you understand that um, encoding and how you operate energetically. I like that. I like that description of it being your car model and then under the hood is something totally different. Um, and that it's so unique to each one of us. I mean, no two people will have the same human design. 
Um, yes, and and I can I can generally give you some um, some high level sort of tidbits. One is that seventy percent of the population are meant to be worker bees. We're called generators in human design. We have an abundance of energy. These are the people who tend to be very busy or who just um, have a task list and, and move from one thing to another because they're built in a way to work and perform and produce. This is different though than the less than 10% of the people who are actually manifestors. And that manifestor energy is when somebody can visualize or initiate things. And from that, they, they can very um, easily start projects or create energy to infuse projects. And what I want to say is we're all conditioned to be manifestors. We're taught to just do it. Mm. And that energy is really um, describing the manifestor type not the generator. Generators operate in a different way. They can't just do it. I mean, they probably can try and maybe they are sometimes successful, but oftentimes we may burn out or feel frustrated because here's the key. We are not meant to initiate, um, initiate projects. We're meant to follow opportunities that are the right thing for us, at least generators that I'm talking about, like myself. Okay. okay. So, so there's a big difference in, again, how we're conditioned. And if we start to align our energy more in the way that human design is showing us that we are built, then things become, again, a lot more effortless and more ease and flow and I've seen that happen for my, to myself personally and for others who um, get a reading about their chart and start to understand it and make different choices. Maybe they're resting more. Maybe they're um, using their time to more prepare and organize rather than try to, again, initiate like the manifester. Gotcha. Yeah, mine was called a manifesting generator. Can you speak to just a little bit about that? Yeah. So that's a combination of both. And um, you're still more on the generator side because you've got consistent energy, but some of that energy, you move quickly. Um, you can visualize and um, see concepts and, and things and ideas to start. And it's important though, that you also wait for those opportunities to come to you, meaning um, prepare, make sure you're informing people around you of maybe the ideas that you have. And when you start to realize waiting for opportunities, it's a little bit like law of attraction where you need to make sure your energy is in the right place. And then there's going to be like a magnetic attraction for the right work at the right time with the right people. And this is the key. It will fill you up. It'll bring you joy. It'll make you feel good. And you said something earlier about how self-care and about the word devotion versus discipline. Just notice the energy shift in that for you yes. when you felt different with devotion. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that is also important in human design is the feeling because that's a body centered wisdom and human design. Another important concept to just um, make note of is our heads are meant not for decision making. Our head often is cluttered and causes confusion or resistance if we start to overthink and, and um, try to make decisions from the head. And we can again, but when we use our energy and make the decision from our body, it becomes a very different type of choice that we make and a different alignment. I love that. That, that is, that is so true. You know, our logical mind only goes off of, it's only thinking about experiences we've already had. So there's no new creativity within that logical side. We have to be in that spiritual tapped in, tuned in side um, to that, that energetic side to receive those creative thoughts. Um, yes. And, and, you know, we also receive information in the head and we, we can do research and we can process, yeah. but 
our again our our energy and our body also is different for decision making depend on depending on your type your human design type and how you're wired some people may feel more emotion some people may feel more a gut feeling um generators use what's called sacral energy and so you can ask yourself yes no questions and answer from the gut or the sacral which has a sound either aha uh -huh or uh uh so that is another way of making decisions that um, when you practice and and can understand or uncover what is your decision making strategy that's it's called or authority then you have the ability to i think more effortless effortlessly again make decisions and and um you know life won't be perfect but it certainly will be in more of a flow state oh i love that yes i i definitely can tell that when my head gets all wrapped in it and i'm trying to figure out all the hows and the wins and the wheres and the who's that that's when just it's such confusion. It's such, I, I can't seem to get there in my planning or my thinking or my strategies. It's like, I have to sit back a minute and chill out so that I can actually let that intuitive side of me drop in some of those ideas. Um, yeah. And that's where self-care comes into play. Like you mm -hmm. just mentioned sitting back Maybe it's meditating. For some people, it's out going out for a walk in nature. Um, and that's a great opportunity to do self-care when you notice that the mind is involved. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's going to naturally um, do that because um, we're intellectual beings mm -hmm. and we are meant to be thinking and receiving information in the head. But once it crosses that line and there's confusion or resistance, it's a great opportunity and signal to do self-care because then the self-care gets you into your body and also brings in the energy that you need or the alignment of your current energy so that you can feel like you said, tuned in and tapped into more, your, more of your inner wisdom and sort of you become the GPS for that car you become not only an efficient car and heading in the right direction, but also attracting the right things along the way. Yeah, I like that. I, yeah, I definitely see a difference when I do take time out to meditate in the morning or, um, you know, do my journaling or uh, journal about things that I appreciate or just thinking of, um, feeling good emotional words. I have a thing that I do that's my A to Z list of emotional, good feeling, emotional, positive, emotional words. And I just go through the alphabet, A through Z, and try to just write down words that that are, that begin with each letter. And, um, you know, that just like swoops me right into that, ah, okay. <laughs> I've taken a step back here and I'm, and I'm doing better. So that's great. And, and let me just mention too, that might even speak to some of the energy I would guess that's in your chart that would be related to words and communication and mm -hmm. sound. Um, not everyone may have that. And so for you, that's, that's a great, again, unique way for you to be mm -hmm. starting the day with self-care with those positive words and affirmations. Yes. Yes. And even before I go to sleep at night, usually I'll lay in bed and, and just go through kind of a thankfulness list because I want to go to sleep with the intention that I'm going to rest well, that my sleep will be sweet, that I will be refreshed in the morning, and that I'll awake in the same mood that I'm going to sleep in. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to pre-plan pre for the next day as far as like, energetically pre-paving that, um, that attitude that I will wake up with. So I guess that actually is another little self-care that I'm doing that I don't acknowledge. So, um, so even like when you're planning self-care, just speak about some of the little, some of the things, like you said, it doesn't have to be this big 
explosion of a plan, it can be these little step-by-step -step improvements that you start taking. What are some of those things that you suggest for people to start doing? Well, I've got three tips that I'll give um, when it comes to self-care. And what I do recommend also is, um, and I have a seven step process, but how to create a self-care plan that's customized to you and uh, to, to, to do some uh, thinking and, and uh, exploring around that um, and what feels good to you for self-care, but the tips that I have can be applied to, to anyone, whatever you choose. The first is make self-care a priority. Mm. So that means, um, like you said, devotion or discipline, whatever, whatever word that you prefer, it's putting it first on your list or putting yourself first. It might mean setting boundaries, saying no to things, carving out time in your calendar and that um, you might start the day or end the day or both to do self-care you're making it a priority because uh, everything else will benefit from it there's a ripple effect i call it when you make self-care a priority the second step or second um tip i should say is to keep it simple at least to start it doesn't have to be overwhelming or time consuming, and it doesn't have to be expensive. Self-care can be free. It can be just like I had said earlier, taking a few breaths, maybe setting an alarm to take a few breaths throughout the day. Um, keeping it simple also means making sure that it's in small increments, especially um, when you're trying to um, really make it consistent, like I said, the consistent committed practice in your day. So just start small. Um, and what I used to do in the beginning was kind of get excited about by the end of the day, what will I have done for myself? What can I, what can I look forward to? Almost like you're writing in your gratitude journal, create, create maybe a self-care journal and keep track of anything that you've done and things that you didn't even maybe realize. Maybe it was, you know, I got in a few more glasses of water. Than I, than I had planned to, or you know, today I made somebody feel good or I just was kind to myself. And then the third tip I have is to make self-care essential. And I describe this like the oxygen mask. So we know that it's important and we know we should make it a priority and keep it simple, but when it's essential, we're, it's almost become second nature to us. And that's really, of important key because an oxygen mask, um, oxygen to begin with, we take for granted that we're breathing it and it's so important. When you put that oxygen mask on in a crisis, it's because you need to make sure that you're um, able to then uh, breathe in the right oxygen and stay alive and then help perhaps others. And this is why, again, I, I mentioned for caregivers, like what I went through a few years ago with my father with Alzheimer's, um, caregivers need to make sure so much that they are um, giving themselves self-care because they're taking care of others, or you might be a parent taking care of children. So that oxygen mask is so important. And again, when you put it on yourself, then you show up in a different way. And again, there's a ripple effect, I believe. And people can sense that energy and that you are more in alignment. So those are my those are my three tips. And um, you know, self care can again look very different for everybody. So I consider the process of creating a personalized plan really important too. Yes, and you're right. There's there's times in talking about some of the things you were talking about. I, I'm thinking, oh, I. I actually have a little bit more self-care than I'm giving myself credit for. Because even in my day, I try to hold my mornings out. Like I don't make calls before 10 or I don't, you know, try to um, meet with anyone or, or it's like I reserve my morning for me because I get up early. Um, we go out on the porch and have coffee together and chit chat and no matter how cold or whatever, we just bundle up and go sit just so we have our quiet time. 
before we both go separate ways, my husband and I. So um, that and my meditation, and like you said, just being aware of how much water I'm drinking, um, just even those things, I, I, you forget that that's really self-care. That, that Yeah, and I, I love you know, you take time in the morning. Um, I also don't um, start too early, but what you described, I like taking the time out at the end of the day to mm. shut down uh, the computer and to just relax with my family and even my pets um, because that's, that's important to me, you know, as again, self-care. And for me, that helps me unwind towards the end of the day. So it looks different for everybody. And if you don't do it every day, but at least you're doing something, maybe your self-care was um, drinking water. For me, I also love essential oils. So I'm just going to plug Marianne has this amazing intuition anointing oil that she sent me the other day. And like this to me, I start my day making sure that I'm diffusing oils or putting oils, you know, on so that I just just shift that energy and that sensory that smell is really amazing yes yes because essential oils and i teach that essential oils are much more intuitive than we give them credit for we think oh well you have to look at this one and what does it do and it is good for this and then this one's good for that it's like no if you smell an oil and it just oh, it just does something for you because it, it, the essential oils are going through your olfactory nerve right to your brain center that's for your mood. And, and then it sends out messages of healing throughout your body. So um, essential oils are very intuitive. They're, they're not near as cut and dried. They're not dogmatic. If you like the smell of an essential oil, that is good for you because maybe later in the day, that one doesn't trigger it. Maybe this one does um, because we're all at a different place throughout the day. Yes. And, and I appreciate you plugging intuition. Intuition was a essential oil blend that I asked my spirit guides, the many, I said, I asked them one day, would you give me a recipe for an essential oil blend? And this was the one they came up with. And I wrote it down as they were giving it to me and I blended it and created it. So that's available on my website. So I thank you for that little plug. That was very nice of you. And a great way for people to incorporate into their self-care. Absolutely, because I use mine every day. And you know, even yeah. before we got on this call, this, this podcast, I applied my intuition, um, essential oil, because I know what it does for my body, my energy, and my intention. I'm placing my intention that as I'm applying it, that that will be expanded, whatever the intention, the good feeling intention that I'm creating. So another self-care thing, I use it at night before bed, every night before I go to bed, I apply it. So it's just, um, it's been a joy for me. So um, thank you for mentioning that. I do have um, something else that that I wanted to talk about. How do you kind of integrate and help people, you know, you help them know what their human design is, you go through that process. And then how is that related to self-care? I mean, I know we touched on it a little bit, but could you expound on that just a little bit more of how, how human design and self-care kind of go hand in hand? Sure. And again, let me, I'll recap some of the things that I said, like the head is a terrible place to be. It's um, so much more um, intuitive for us to be in the body. And that's what self-care does. I mean, really look at almost every self-care, even if you're doing things like a puzzle or something creative, like mm -hmm. painting or knitting, you still feel aligned with your body even if your mind is involved, it's aligned in your body. So that's so important for accessing the inner wisdom and insights and intuition. And I believe um, for most of us, depending on our types, we, we do need to do um, self-care. Like for example, a, a generator has a lot of energy and if they don't 
exercise every day or do some physical work. I mean, it may be working on a farm even, um, but physical exercise or work, they may have a tougher time sleeping in the evening. Mm -hmm. So for generators, physical activity is really important. Um, maybe it's also quieting the mind because uh, generators can just go, 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 and they still might need some times to recharge. Now, if you were a manifester or a type we didn't talk about earlier, projector, they don't have consistent energy. It comes in spurts. So they need to know when to take their downtime. Some might even need more downtime than others. They say even projectors are not meant to work a nine to five job because um, they just really do need breaks and their own schedule. And so if you don't have that consistent energy, then the downtime is important, but then you also want to know when your energy is moving and when that's a good time to do things like maybe more movement for your body. Um, and you could even be out in nature. You can do things like physical activity in nature or just sitting out in nature. So Nature to me will feed every type, every type of human design. Yes. And again, we're connecting to aligning our energy in some way. Being in nature is a great way to connect to energy. We have this divine connection that um, we also want as part of our energy alignment. And so self-care is just part of human design. It seems to be so natural to me. Um, and it just, again, when we're looking at how are we integrating self-care, other things start to feel a lot more effortless. I think of it as like, we're so aware right now of clutter in our homes or what we are, you know, things that we have around us that we don't need, um, that we've accumulated. Well, the same thing's happening energetically within us. So when you're doing self-care, I don't know anyone who thinks of self-care as clutter. I think of self-care as clearing and helping the ease and flow. So it seems to me like self-care, again, is more like oxygen that we need. Yes. Yeah, that saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. It's definitely, I've <laughs> worked from pouring from an empty cup for too long, and it's definitely time for me to just be more consistent with my self-care and be more mindful of it and intention, um, intend to do it so that, that I'm taking care of myself and then I actually have something to give because when we get so depleted, then we have nothing to give. Like you said, it's a ripple effect. If we're feeling good, that ripple effect of that energy going forward from us is actually more helpful. And you talked about self, um, caregivers. Oh my, I have been a caregiver for elderly parents and cousins and things in our home four different times over the years. And um, uh, it's, that's a really tough time. I mean, sometimes years at a time, three years at a time. And, and um, this last time it was five months and it was, it definitely was difficult because it's almost tag team between my husband and myself. If we didn't have someone coming in to give us a break, we could not leave the house together because someone had to be with this person, you know, our, our people 24 seven, there was no leaving together or even just going out for a break or having dinner or anything. So we definitely had to put some time in there for someone else to come give us a break. You know. And sometimes, like you just mentioned, self-care is about asking for help mm -hmm. or asking for something that you need. Mm -hmm. And I also want to point out something important, and I, I'm going to add this to sort of my talks and, and my list of self-care, but like you said, Mary Ann, just noting, oh, maybe drinking some extra water was self-care today. So if you keep, let's say, a, a self-care journal and notice what are you already doing it starts to raise your awareness and you start to see self-care less as that task that you haven't done enough of or that you can only accomplish when you finish something. Start to notice that you're already probably doing some self-care in some way and write it down. And then you'll 
naturally want either more of it or will start to recognize even more things that you're doing. I think, I think that's part of it. Awareness will open up our energy to receive it, receive more of it. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, because I, I, I'm going to have to go through my day now and start writing some of this down of self-care so I can kind of, you know, pat myself on the shoulder. I am kind of doing this. I'm just doing it so mindlessly that then I beat myself up, think I didn't get any self-care in when I actually did. Do you also see a, a little bit of um, the unworthiness factor falling into place? Well, I think about people feeling like they're not worthy enough. Like you said, you know, we had to ask for someone to give us a break. And yeah. that's really, really hard for me to do, to ask for help. I think with the human design lens, the way I see that in two ways, one conditioning. So that unworthiness are either messages that we've been taught yes. as we go or that we're carrying from our ancestors. Because mm. I've done some of my self-care is around ancestral clearing. And so those are things that we don't have to hold on to. And the other is to just notice in your energetic blueprint if there's some of that unworthiness. Like for example, um, we look at in your chart different energy centers that have different characteristics and attributes. And one of those energy centers um, around the heart is related to how we receive, how we feel worthy. And again, the awareness when you say, ah, I maybe have that encoding, it doesn't always come consistently. But here's the beautiful thing about human design, because someone asked me this recently, well, is there a way to change it? No, technically you're encoded a certain way, but two things can happen. One, when you're aware of it, you can make different choices. Uh -huh. And also when you may be lacking or um, not complete in your energy, being around people or things that inspire you, maybe that make you feel worthy, will help activate that energy because now there's an energetic relationship with another thing or a being. It could even be, let's say, a pet, right? You know how you feel around a pet. You just feel their love and you don't question your worthiness around a pet, right? Because they're just so true. They're, right. Yeah. So it's this, it's sometimes who we're surrounding ourselves with or the environment that we're in, the inspiration we're receiving from around us, the feelings. So everything's energy. So again, those are the those are just a few ways to just be aware. When you feel a certain way, it could be conditioning mm -hmm. and it could be how you naturally are built. So you can then make different choices. Yeah, I like that because definitely, you know, I, I struggle with asking for things that I want, space that I want, or something that just delights me that it's just something I want. And it's really because of my upbringing you know, you're not supposed to want stuff. You're, you're just supposed to, you know, go be a little worker bee and, and, um, you know, do for everyone else, you know, your needs don't matter. Um, and so, yeah, for, for being able to, um, be aware that I have that in me has actually helped. And that's but probably why you're caregiver and so good yeah. and and that keeps coming up as a theme for you because again care caregivers you know naturally might be givers more than receivers but it yes maybe that's also how your encoding is yeah that could be because yeah I'm definitely not near as good of a receiver as I am a giver and um, I really have to work at allowing that receiving you know, so I, I think it, then it gets all wrapped up and warped a little bit in my self-care because it's like, well, I don't, I'm not giving, you know, but I am giving to myself. I am ministering to myself. And um, one of my uh, new things that I'm doing is, is uh, refreshing that 
time of taking tea. I wrote a blog post on that just recently. And just that being a self-care ritual, not just go make my mug of tea and go right back to work, but actually sit down for a few minutes and either journal or read or sit outside and just look out across the pasture. We live on a farm. So it's, you know, I'm out in nature a lot because that's where I take my little breaks. I go sit outside and just look, just enjoy the birds and the sun. If it happens to be a sunny day or whatever. Um, but allowing myself to feed myself because definitely our body knows when it's time that we need to recharge. And if we keep pounding past that, you know, then we're, <laughs> then we create, you know, other problems in our body because our body just goes, I can't take it anymore. You know, that's right. I'm going to break down and they, and it has, it has in the past for me. So um, I don't want to have to be in that position anymore. So I really want to take care of me and, and, and provide for my own self-care. So I know you have a couple of things you'd like to share with our audience, some, some offers. I know you talked about your seven step process. So give us a little um, overview about what you've got coming up and what you have in the works. Sure, and, and I wanna encourage folks, they can access this through my website. I know you're gonna put that in the show notes, but it's christieselfcare.com. And um, yeah, the seven step process that I um, have for you is a, a, a PDF that you can download um, that takes you through developing a customized, personalized self-care plan. And I actually do this visually through what's called a mind map. So it's kind of a, a, fun, a fun exercise. Um, it's good to do um, maybe in some quiet time and self-care for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also am having a, a developing a digital course so that folks can um, learn more about human design and self-care and um, go through that course so that they then can create the self-care plan customized as well as really understand more about their energy and um, how the two tie together. And then, of course, for free, you can come to Christie's Self Care Tribe on Facebook. That is my free group where I post daily inspiration and tools and offerings, events, even um, to help inspire and guide you around self care. Because you do a lot, you post a lot, even with your yoga practice and and meditations and things like that. I know because I'm in your group also. Um, so I, I definitely see, you know, those little tips and things that you drop in there for us, um, to give us ideas and, and to help us, you know, engage in our own self-care practice. And like you said, it's a custom thing. We're not cookie cutters. One size does not fit all. <laughs> so take advantage of, uh, Christy's seven step process. It's a free downloadable PDF that she's offering and, and I'm looking forward to your online course coming up. I think that will be really, really exciting. Um, so I thank you for sharing. Is um, Do you have any other? Well, first, let me mention christiesselfcare.com. And it's K-R-I-S-T-I-S, -I -I christiesselfcare.com. And it will be in the show notes. So you'll, you'll have a link directly there. Um, do you have anything that closing remarks that you would like words of wisdom you have to leave with us today? The quote that I love is that make essential self-care a priority, not a reward or a luxury or even a task. Ooh. So just let that land. And I hope that that inspires you to do more self-care. I love that. And that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's sometimes the way I think it is. Well, if I get this done, then I can go do self-care. Right. So I'm always putting it last because something else always squeezes in between and I go, oh, well, but now I have to do this. So I love that you say it's not a luxury, you know, that it's essential. Um, yeah. And if you reprogram, the reward actually does follow, which is more opportunity 
ease, more invitations, more abundance because your energy is aligned. I like that. And I'm all about wanting our energy to be aligned. So thank you, Christy. I so appreciate you coming on the podcast with me and um, sharing your beautiful work with everyone. I, I love Christy. I have been in some of her workshops and things, and um, I just have so enjoyed sharing her and her work with you. So thank you, everyone, for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast because this helps us expand this joyful work into the world. And um, also be sure and visit MariannePack.com for all of our services. And um, I so appreciate you listening and joining in with us today. And remember, you are joy looking for a way to express.